Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest vodcast. And this is a talk, just expanded a little bit, I gave the ISCT meeting in June, which is the course Jeff Rubin has run every year for many, many years in San Francisco, a terrific course. And I was speaking about volume rendering or advanced volume rendering. And that's what I'm going to speak to you about. And actually what I ended up speaking about, of course, is cinematic rendering. I mentioned at the start that the reason we do imaging is to be able to understand complex data sets. And as we develop new techniques, it's really the same principle. How can we explore data? When you look at the work done by Bob Drebin, Lauren Carpenter, Pat Hanrahan, 1988, and the work was done in 85, 84, when they talked about volume rendering and using medical data, they also talked about the lighting model. And with volume rendering, you typically have one light source, but you can use it very well. So here I'm showing you both the aorta and the veins, the gonadal veins, the kidneys, the liver, and the like. Or here I'm showing you the visualizations of the patient's vessels, uh, of the heart, with the pseudoaneurysm, and again, particularly on the image on your right with the color coding, you get a very good feel of the shading models and the lighting models that really give you the three-dimensional feel uh, compared to the image on your left, which is more of a MIP projection. So again, the volume rendering does give you the feel of being able to look at those things. But work has been done, and we've spoken about this in touch, and we're gonna be speaking about this a lot over the coming years, Brett Crow is talking about a way of using multiple lighting models to be able to look at the data set, not just the one lighting source, with the goal by having multiple lighting sources and doing this photorealistic volume rendering framework that perhaps we can make better quality images. And in this article, they're, that they talk about how they're able to simulate real-world light interactions without compromising the accuracy of the computations, providing more realistic images. Um, again, this will be something done in hardware, not necessarily software. And Crowe's talks about this photorealistic volume rendering, which tend to be aesthetically more pleasing while maintaining the accuracy of the data set. And Siemens um, Research Group has taken this a step forward, trying to implement this into practice, talking about these image-based lighting in these environments which allow better quality images. And uh, such natural lighting in combination with the accurate simulation of photon scattering and absorption leads to photorealistic images that resemble many shading effects that can be observed in nature. And we have this article in press, which will be coming out probably the same time you're hearing this lecture, which talks about this illumination, the ability to create a sort of a next generation volume rendering imaging with this environmental or light map, uh, the ability to use textures and brightness to really improve the quality. And so if I show this case of a dissection of the patient's SMA, you see the volume rendering, and now you see the volume rendering on the left and the uh, cinematic rendering on the right. You see the vessels a bit further out. You see the details and the sharpness seem better in cinematic. Or in this case, patient with a neuroendocrine tumor or a neurogenic tumor with extensive adenopathy, which is vascular, and there is the 3D map impressively showing you the vessels and the relationship to the nodes. Or this case, in a patient with cirrhosis with recanalization of the umbilical vein, look at those collaterals. Look at the relationship of the vessels to the abdominal wall, and again, changing the lighting models to accentuate that. Or in this case, look at the texture of the liver. Yes, the patient has a fem-fem graft, but I'm showing it for liver texture. Look at the texture as I change the different parameters and change the lighting model. And again, the question is, how much information can we extract from these data sets that we've not been extracting to this point? And there's that same patient from the back, and again, you nicely see the, patient, the patient's fem, fem, fem bypass graph as well. So the question is, what can you do with these images? If you look at this case of a patient with pancreatic cancer, if you look at the image on your right and you stare at it a little bit closer, you can see tumor encasement and narrowing of the portal vein SMV confluence, but you can see the extensive collaterals present. And depending how I show the images, showing the bowels, showing the vessels, 
Here's a couple more images showing the collaterals, the gonadal vein, the prominent vasculature, or here targeting back to the liver where there's a stent in the portal vein. Look at the details we're able to see. The liver looks so real in that case. Or in this example with an endovascular stent in place, showing you a five sets of images where I simply changed some of the parameters and the relationship between the various structures and collaterals. We also were talking about looking at texture of glands. Look at the pancreas from this series of images and you see a normal pancreatic gland. And you can see here again another set of images where I'm showing you the texture of the pancreatic gland throughout with different renderings. But then here I'm showing you a mass in the head of the pancreas. There's a different texture right there. That was a carcinoma. And here's just a few more images showing you that as well. So the question about texture and early detection, particularly when you go to deep learning, may indeed be very important. Or this example, different tumors have different appearances. This, the um, honeycombing, I guess, of a serous cyst adenoma. Look how nicely you see the cystic components on these um, cinematic rendered images. Now I'm showing you the MIP and the volume rendering with the stretching of the hepatic artery, but look how nicely you see that on the 3D cinematic as well. So again, can we say this provides more information and can we say this could impact management? Or this example, straightforward axial CT showing you a large neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas with widespread liver metastasis, but there it is in cinematic. Look at the mass itself texture is different because of its vascularity, liver metastasis with feeding vessels to each of the liver lesions, and here I'm now showing you the surface of the liver and those many metastases. Or this example where the patient has a one centimeter lesion in the body, which was a neuroendocrine tumor. Notice the lesion has like a smooth border to it. It's very vascular around the outside. And here's just four more images. One of the things you can see is that I can change the rendering parameters. The question is, can I learn how, maybe with deep learning, to optimize the rendering, par rendering parameters? Or in this example, this patient has a hepatoma showing you the outside, just showing you the really good detail of the costal cartilage. Now look at the liver. You see that infiltration of the liver, stretching of the vessels? That's a hepatoma. And here it is from a view from below, the marked textural changes in the patient's liver and the infiltration in the liver is what we see. And similar findings, I'll just show you a few examples, are in the kidney where you very nicely see this large left renal mass. The lesion in the right kidney is a simple cyst, sharply marginated. The left kidney lesion extends also into the renal vein. And again, you can see the changes in the texture of the kidney as it relates to that tumor. So it should be easy to recognize the kidneys, which we do now with deep learning with better than 90% accuracy, point to point. But now we could take this further and really look at the tumor, which in this case extends into the renal vein. And if you want to see impressive images, this patient had chest pain. It was a triple rule out. Look at the outside, look at the muscle, look at the bone, look at the costal cartilage, look at the details of the monitors over the patient's chest wall. And now look at the rendering. This patient has a coronary artery fistula, both from the right and left coronary arteries, but look at the detail of that fistula over the pulmonary artery. This was what's causing the patient's symptoms. Just beautiful example, look at the patient's aorta. It looks fake, the details. Look at the branch vessels off, look at the patient's myocardium, and look at the patient's coronary artery fistula. Very nice visualizations, very nice explanation of the process. And it's not just in vascular imaging. This is a patient, image on your right is cinematic rendering, image on your left is classic volume rendering. But you can see here that the C1 vertebral body has fractures to the right and the left. Very nice example showing those fractures. You can see the details of the base of the skull. You can see the areas that were involved or not involved. You can see in this next case, look at the carotid arteries tracking through at the base of the skull. It looks like an artistic rendition. Look at it coming through the C1 foramen. 
And this patient had orbital fractures, which are nicely seen, as well as a fracture of the patient's left temporal bone. But here, look at the fractures of the orbit, the fracture of the nasal bone, and the fractures, of course, of the temporal bone. So again, we're able to look at all of these different fractures and look at the detail. It's interesting where this is going to go. Cinematic rendering is still slow. It's still cumbersome, but that's going to change, I think, as we go to faster hardware. It's a challenge doing presets because no two cases are exactly alike, so that's going to be something we need to work on. Uh, we need to go more into faster GPUs and faster processing to make things work well. And I think it's very exciting. Then we'll need to look carefully also at the science of things. Just because something looks prettier doesn't mean it's better. Who's going to pray for the technology? Is it something we should be doing? And those are all questions, but my friends, those are questions for another day. In the meantime, we're marching along. And with that, have a great day.